So now we're moving on to meiosis 2. This is very similar to meiosis 1, but now it actually deals with separating sister chromatids from each other instead of separating homologous chromosomes from each other. In the first phase of meiosis 2, this is called prophase 2. The, chromos the chromosomes, once again, condense, so we can see them. They're no longer that squiggly chromatin, and we can actually see them. Uh, you can see that the spindles are beginning to form again, and our nuclear envelope is beginning to break down once again. The next phase of meiosis 2 is called metaphase 2. It looks super similar, kind of acts pretty similar. Um, again, the centromeres, the center parts, are lining up randomly along the equator. So I'll draw our equator of our two cells. Um, it looks a whole lot like metaphase 1, except for instead, now we've got two cells instead of one cell, and we've got only a single chromosome instead of uh, homologous chromosomes lining up at the equator. The next phase of meiosis 2 is called anaphase 2. Uh, as you can probably guess, it's pretty similar to anaphase 1. However, this time, instead of homologous pairs being separated from each other, like so, um, our sister chromatids are actually being separated from each other. So it's now going from that X shape to the just um, single chromatids. Uh, this is important here for you to understand. By splitting the sister chromatids from each other, you still actually have N chromosomes at each pole. So remember before, this entire cell had N chromosomes, and this entire cell had N chromosomes. But because we're actually splitting this single chromosome into its two chromat into its sister chromatids, um, that actually ends up equaling one plus one. So you can see our n is now becoming n plus n, and same with this n, it's becoming n plus n. The very last phase of meiosis two, you guessed it, it's telophase two. Um, here, instead of making two cells, we're now actually making four cells. Um, and we have our single chromatids instead of the sister chromatids, so we no longer have that X shape. Um, four nuclei have begun to form. You see our nuclei are beginning to form. Um, you can't see the spindles anymore. The chroma, um, the centrioles are now gone, and our cells are going to divide again using cytokinesis. So our final products are actually four gametes. Uh, remember, gametes are our sex cells, and within our gametes, our gametes are haploid. Remember, that's an important vocabulary word, which means they have N chromosomes, so each of these has N chromosomes. In this situation, we can see that N equals 2, which makes sense because we started out with a cell that had 4 or 2 N chromosomes. Uh, but remember that in humans, N or our gametes, our sex cells, should have 23 chromosomes. Um, you can also see that now these chromosomes are just individual chromatids. They are no longer sister chromatids. They no longer have that X shape. So I know that was a lot of information, so let me just show you the big picture. Um, we can see here the entire process of meiosis, including interphase, meiosis 1, and meiosis 2. So letter A right here, this is showing you um, interphase G2 specifically after the DNA is replicated. I don't know if you can see it, but we've got our chromatin, and each of our chromatin has two strands, which means that it's actually replicated. Letter B is prophase 1. You can see letter B is prophase 1. Um, the homologous pairs are exchanging information, uh, which is called crossing over, and our nuclear envelope is dissolving. Letter C is metaphase 1. The homologous pairs are lining up at the equator, and they're attaching to the spindle fibers. Letter D, right here, this is anaphase. This is where each of our chromosomes is, sorry, this is where each of our chromosomes in our homologous pairs are now separating from each other and going to opposite poles of the cell. Uh, letter E is telophase 1. This is where the cell begins to split. There are now two nuclei. Um, each of these cells now has N chromosomes. And for us humans, N equals 23. Remember, we started out over here with N, with 2N equals 46. Uh, letter F right here, that is prophase 2. All right, letter G is metaphase 2. 
Letter H is anaphase 2. Here we can see that the sister chromatids are actually being separated from each other, um, which is a big difference from um, over here where our homologous pairs were being separated from each other. Um, remember, when a chromosome has an X shape, it's still just considered one chromosome. When it splits, each new sister chromatid is now considered one chromosome. Um, so the result is that you had N over here and you had over N over here, but we're actually ending up with N in each of these four poles. So we're kind of like multiplying. Letter I is telophase 2. This is where these two cells begin to split and we're making four nuclei, making four cells. So we end up with our four gametes in letter I, which is the final result. And each of these now has N chromosomes and they each just contain a, um, chrom single chromatids. So there's no X shape, no sister chromatids. And each of these gametes is going to maybe, hopefully, actually probably not. But um, some of these gametes are going to go on to undergo fertilization. So two sex cells will get together. Um, they'll create a diploid cell, which is 2N, and that'll give us 46 chromosomes. And that's the beginning of a new human being. Really quickly, let me address what happens to other organelles. Um, remember I said before, we're just so cool, we're going to ignore the other organelles. What actually happens, those other organelles get split apart um, in kind of the same manner so that some organelles end up in each of the four gametes. Um, so all the gametes actually end up with everything that they need. All right, so you've reached the end. I wish you good learning, and I will see you in class tomorrow.